This is a PlayStation Vita, and it was honestly a pretty underrated console when it released over 10 years ago. In the last few years, it has really risen up to not only reach its ultimate handheld potential, but become a truly go-to system in the modded console community. And its hardware rivals even that of the Nintendo Switch. I've been messing around with the Vita for a few months now, and all I can say is, man, I wish I would have picked up one of these sooner. But my current go-to Vita has definitely seen some better days. These things were known for getting tossed in a backpack, or more often a sweaty pair of cargo shorts, and then carried around all day. And mine sure does look like it's been hanging from a car key lanyard for the majority of its life. I think it's time we gave this beautiful handheld the makeover it deserves. Let's tear this thing down, clean it, and give it a totally new life. Alright guys, let's get into it. So for this we're going to need our Vita, of course, a new screen, a new back panel, some new buttons, of course some new sticks, and also your favorite N64 game, or something shaped like it, and I'll explain later. So first let's start by taking apart the Vita. You'll need a small Phillips head screwdriver. There are two screws on the bottom, four screws on the back, and one screw in here. So before we get started, just make sure to take your Vita and completely power it down. For removing the back, you'll need a small plastic pry tool. Start by wedging the tool behind the trigger on the right side. You'll hear it pop when you slide it in. So slide it in, hear the pop, and pry it up just a little bit. We gotta get those clips to pop. So once you get that one done, go to the other side, do the same thing, just like that. Just keep feeding it in, and you'll hear it pop. So once you get that pop, those are the hard ones, then just go around the edges. Now be careful not to rip this because there is a ribbon attached. So once you get it popped open, feel it there. You can see that ribbon right there. So all we want to do is flip that over slowly. A small tab right here. Go ahead and take that tab, flip it up, and then this should pop right out. First thing that we're going to want to do is grab the back of our new shell, line them up so that the ribbon's on the right side. What we're going to do is we're going to pop these speakers out and transfer them over now. So you can use your screwdriver, your spudger, they just kind of pop out and just transfer them over. They got a little bit of adhesive on them so they stick in. Just make sure not to bend those pins. Okay, we're good. So now we can completely set this aside. The only thing you might want to reuse is this little piece, so we'll leave that. Next, remove the battery. Some tweezers. Get underneath it, it just pops right up. So the first thing we're gonna work on is this right side here. So as you can see, there's a screw right here, there's a screw down here, one, two, three ribbon cables. All that needs to be taken out. Carefully pop all those open, and then carefully pop all of these out. You can bend them back a little bit so they're out of the way. Now the next thing we need to see is there's a little clip right here, so bend this back a little bit. And I believe that's the only one. So you should be able to pop that right off now. Next thing we're going to want to do is remove the buttons. We're going to be using new joysticks, so we don't technically need to remove these joysticks right now because we're just going to be putting new ones in the next Vita. But if you want to reuse your joysticks, you can just take this one screw out right here and transfer it over to the new shell. This is the contact button for the L trigger. So we're going to go ahead, since we're working from this side, we're going to go ahead and peel that off. It's just a little bit of adhesive and stick that on our new shell. All right, next thing, same thing with the left side, two screws, three ribbons.
Next, let's remove the back brackets. There's one screw right here on the right. Two screws up top. And then one screw on the left side here. At this point, you can now remove the top part. This part has a little clip right here. You should be able to just kind of pop it out. Same with the other side. Oop, there it goes, pops right out. And then the next thing that we need to do is we need to get this part off. This is the part that holds the power button and then the power LEDs. So go ahead and unlatch that peel it off very carefully, and then stick it to the new shell. This one can be in there pretty good. So I like to start from the left side. Once you get that up, you can kind of peel it. And once you have that like that, it should come up a little bit easier. It's not getting hung up on the tabs. Grab our new shell, transfer it straight over. You can't mess this up because there are little tabs. You see that little tab right there, guides you right in where it needs to go. So this is the motherboard, camera here, camera here. Go ahead and take this metal piece out. Now there's a clip right here. There's also a clip right down here. And those are the only two clips. So bend those back a little bit. Doesn't really matter if you break them if you're replacing the shell. Uh, I try not to break them, but you know. So don't get too fast here because what you're gonna need to do is unlatch this ribbon cable right here. And then you're gonna wanna be really careful with the camera because the cameras are stuck in with a little bit of adhesive. So I would just pry it up a little bit. There it goes. Pop that up. And there we have it. And we don't need that anymore, so we can set that aside and let's bring in the new screen. So now I'll explain to you what the N64 cartridge is for. Bend those a little bit, set that down. And now I have a good spot. We don't have to worry about ruining our new joysticks. So first thing we have to do here is we have to remove these little covers for the camera holes. I go ahead and do that on the back one right now too, just so you don't forget. Okay, so we'll just reverse engineer this thing, same way it goes in. So start with this, pull this ribbon cable back. It's gonna clip in. You can see where the clips are and there's little guiding holes as well. There it goes, snaps right in. I'm gonna just go ahead and attach this ribbon right now because we can, there goes that ribbon. Now that that's done, let's go ahead and grab this part. Make sure it's lined up like it's supposed to. Pop that in. And this bad boy right here. And the next thing is this metal piece. It can go on right here. And then we can slide this piece back on. Make sure your camera's popping in place on the left here. and one right here. Attach this ribbon right here. Looking good so far. I went ahead and added a little extra tape to my L and R triggers. All right, so at this point, let's go ahead and put our joysticks in. So grab your joysticks. I'm gonna give these ribbons a little bit of a bend. All right, now that we have those in, let's go ahead and work from the left. So grab this piece, slide it underneath the ribbons, make sure the holes line up where it pops in, and then click it into place. So turn it to its side a little bit. Make sure all these latches are open still. Screw 
right here. Go ahead and place this piece back. One screw right here. Now make sure that this metal piece right here goes over this board. So this is a good time to check and make sure all of your buttons are clicking. If they aren't clicking, you might need to go back and reset them into a better position. Go ahead and put our L and R buttons back in. Grab our battery, set that in, and plug that right there like that. Now at this point, if you want, you can actually turn the Vita on, just be really careful and make sure everything works, but I like to put the back on first, personally. So I'm gonna go ahead and peel this off. And this part's actually kind of tricky, getting this ribbon to go back into its place. If you bend the ribbon out a little, hold it like that, slide it in. Like that. All right, so once you have that like that, spin it back around. Make sure you're feeding the headphone jack into the headphone jack hole, just like that. There we go. Then get the satisfying click. Peel that off, fire that bad boy up. That's always a good feeling. You turn it on and it actually turns on. There we go. All your apps should still be there if you have a hacked Vita. And you did it. You just replaced the screen and the back of your PS Vita. And now it looks amazing. Make sure your speakers are working, and that looks really, really clean. I love the orange and white. One way to check if your joystick's working, if you don't have a game installed that can fire up right away, is to go on your web browser. My website looks a little crazy on the Vita. I don't know if it's optimized for Vita performance, but as you can see that when you scroll up and down, our joystick is scrolling up and down, and then this one, scroll up and down on the right, it will zoom. It looks like both of our joysticks are functioning correctly. That's great. So let's go ahead and just put our screws back in this thing and start playing some games. Yeah, I think one last thing we need to do is change this theme because this thing definitely ain't uh-oh stinky anymore. Oh yeah, that's better. Thank you guys for watching. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit the like button and the subscribe button for more retro repair content. And I hope this inspires you to pick up your own PlayStation Vita. It really was ahead of its time and I think it's gonna be sticking around for a while. The Vita is also one of the most durable handhelds ever made. Watch this.